So let's talk about some of these cuts. Obviously, when it's doing this finishing cut around the outside of the part, it's using a three-quarter inch end mill to step down in some increment. And most likely, that three-quarter inch cutter could probably cut a whole lot more material. It could probably even cut the full depth if you had enough flute length. And, of course, you'd have to have enough flute length to cut all the way around, even with multiple steps. Now, if we wanted it to do fewer steps going down for our finishing cut, we could go back into the FBM parameters, and we could go to our wall finishing parameters, and we can take a look at depth cuts. And we can tell it how to do these depth cuts. Now, it's using some default, which is probably based on a percentage of the tool. Here, we can specify a percentage of the diameter. We could specify the percentage we want. Here, you can just tell it a number of cuts. So I could tell it to take one cut. That's simple enough. Let's OK this. And we'll regenerate that feature-based toolpath again. Now, it'll recalculate everything, but it only takes a few seconds, so it doesn't really matter. Now, if I come down to the bottom to look at those finished toolpaths, we'll see we have one finished cut to the first level, one finished cut down to the level of the rib, and then one finished cut when it reaches the final floor. And then we have one finished cut when it does the outside boundary. So we fine-tune this pretty well. But, you know, we could go a little bit further if we wanted to. When it's doing these finish cuts, do I really need this one down to the top of the rib? And do I need a finish cut that goes down around this top edge of the rib? And another one? This one goes to the full depth. Well, when it goes to the full depth, it goes around the outer boundary, it goes all the way around the rib, and it goes around the pentagon-shaped boss. So really, what do I need the other two for? Well, I don't. So now, here's my choice. Now that I've fine-tuned my feature-based machining toolpaths, I could choose to ignore FBM and then start to play with some of these. I could modify some of these parameters or get rid of toolpaths that I don't want to use at all. But there's another choice. Let me minimize this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on top of my machine group, and I'm going to go up to Groups and tell it to create a new toolpath group. So I've got a new toolpath group down here. And I'll call it My Toolpaths. Now what I'm going to do is expand these and all of these rough toolpaths. Well, I can just click on the heading for this group of rough toolpaths. And I can right-click my mouse. And I can say Copy Those. And then I can come back down here to My Toolpaths. And I can right-click and paste. So I just made a copy of all those toolpaths for the roughing. Now we'll take a look at these finishing toolpaths and we said we don't want the first one and we don't want the second one. We want this finish cut and the outside finish cut. So I'm going to select this toolpath, I'm going to hold down my shift key, grab the next toolpath, I can hold down my right mouse button, I can slide my mouse down, and when I get to the bottom of this list, I can right click my mouse and say copy after. So now they exist down here, and they also exist up on top. So essentially I have a new toolpath group where I've taken copies of those FBM created toolpaths. And I can move my insert pointer down to the end of the list. Now let's just grab that toolpath group, which will select all those operations, and let's take a look at this in Verify. Now if you've been through our introduction CD, which hopefully you have, you're already familiar with the uh, verification tools. I'm going to run through some of this really quick. In this area, 
we can see which particular move we're on, which tool was being used. Down here, we have our toolpath information. It's giving us a feed time of 44 minutes, a rapid time of 1 minute and 6 seconds, and a total time of 45 minutes to complete the entire part. I can roll the wheel on my mouse to zoom up on this if I want, and I can adjust my speed. I'm going to grab the slider and move the speed down a little bit. I'm going to move the precision up, and we'll hit play. So every operation uses a different color so that you can see what's happening. And of course, all those colors are also displayed down here on the progress bar. We can also rewind this and grab the slider on that bar and move to any individual point in the toolpath and we'll see it update to that point. Now you can't go back, it won't put stock back on it, but you can rewind back to the beginning and play it up to a certain point. Now maybe all of these colors look kind of messy and you don't want to see all of these colors. All you have to do for that is to turn off color loop and you can see the boundaries of what's been cut. Now again because of the reflective color of the material it might be hard to see these edges. For that you can go to verify up here and tell it to show edges. Now we can go back to the Home tab and we can get a better idea what this part looks like. And we can close the simulator. So now I have a group of toolpaths down here that are all independent of the feature-based machining, but I still have the original feature-based machining toolpaths. So I could still modify the parameters for FBM for something that I didn't like, it can recreate that toolpath and then I can just copy the one that I want down into my group. Or, as I said, I could modify any of the parameters in here in any of these toolpaths.